All right, everybody. Welcome back to another Rob Reacts video. It's been a minute since we've done one of these, and the reason why is my producer, videographer, editor, uh, best boy, key grip, son, Ryan, baby bird Ryan, has flapped his little wings and moved out uh, into his own crib with his Penelope. So we are we had to move the studio because he's got the machine. So I've done some cooking videos that I could do on the gimbal and stuff like that. And then he comes by the house, picks up all the data, comes back over here and edits them and puts them up. But I haven't been able to do a Rob reacts until he set everything up again for the recording. And then I sent him the green screen so we can do uh, these episodes again. Uh, what we're going to review is a Cletus McFarlane video. Cletus was the one that had the TRX that did wheelies in a previous video. Young man out of uh, Central Florida. Um, and he, he, he lives a pretty cool life. Um, he has a, he rescued a helicopter. Ryan, I want to make sure you link to his original content so folks can go check out his channel if y'all haven't done so he does vehicle restorations he uh does challenges with his buddies where everybody gets so much money and they buy vehicles and then they race them and they put them through the test and see which team wins and one of the things he did was he bought a helicopter that had been abandoned in venezuela so he bought this helicopter and he thinks, oh yeah, I'm going to be able to get right up and get into and fly it. Everything looks good. And then when the inspector came and looked at it, oh, like, you're going to have to change this. You're going to have to change this. You're going to have to do this. So when he realized what an overhaul it was going to be, he said, we're going to do it. Uh, and he sent it up and for a year, the reason I've been watching him is following this helicopter progression. It's an MD-500 um, that was abandoned in Venezuela. Uh, he bought it on the cheap, cheap, but then figured out why it was so cheap because he had to put a whole bunch of money into the restoration of it. But he had it custom painted. He had it racked out, fitted. It's bougie. It's the bougiest helicopter I've ever seen, and I've ridden in a bunch of helicopters. This one is bougie. He's got seats that look like they ought to be in a truck in this thing. Um, but when Hurricane Helene went through and did the devastation that it did in North Carolina, he, he had picked up his helicopter and then two weeks later, Helene comes through and wrecks North Carolina. And he was one of those, I know y'all heard about the helicopter pilots that are raising cane because they got thrown out of North Carolina because they were civilian volunteers. Hey, let me tell you something. It's taken off down here in the South. The Cajun Navy started over there in South Louisiana when the government wasn't responding good. Cajun Navy went in and was rescuing people. And that Cajun Navy keeps rolling. That spirit keeps rolling. And while Cletus may be from Florida, we'll just have to call it the uh, Redneck Air Force instead of the Cajun Navy. But he went up there, and we're going to review that video of some of the stuff he was doing for humanitarian help, and uh, you'll see the devastation that took place up there. Another thing that's going on, looks like tomorrow, uh, Hurricane Milton has put this guy in the crosshairs. Well, guys, today's video was supposed to be of flying this helicopter back to the house and I'm still going to put all that footage in the end of this video. But as you can see, Consuela is a little dirty. She has had a busy couple of days working hard and she's no longer brand new, you could say. She's still in good shape, but uh, she took a beating over the weekend and I'll tell you why. And I didn't intend for this to be really a portion of this video just kind of happened and I wore my helmet cam 
while we were out doing some disaster relief in North Carolina. Basically, on Saturday, I was with Maddie, my wife, and we were gonna go grab some dinner when I got a call from a friend up in North Carolina. His name's Rudy, and he said, hey man, we need some helicopters up here. The hurricane damage is really bad, and there's a lot of people trapped in the mountains. So my wife and I got someone to watch the kids, we loaded up with one bag and flew to North Carolina with no plan and posted that we were on our way. And by the time I got there, I probably had 500 emails and a ton of text messages. And my post had been shared thousands of times and we, we were blown away. We're like, what is going on? How bad is this deal? So we get into North Carolina. We end up staying at Greg Biffle's house because there's no power in the Asheville area. So we couldn't really stay close to where all the damage was. We load Consuelo up with water and fuel. Next morning, take off and fly into just some things that I've never seen before and uh, some really, really bad situations for people. Like, I, I can't really describe it well, but I have some videos on my helmet cam that I'm gonna put in this video. And I'm not putting them in there to try and grow my YouTube channel. I'm simply putting them in there to give you a perspective of how bad the damage in the Asheville area is. And it's not just Asheville, it is spread so far into the mountains of North Carolina. And these areas we're flying in are some of the worst areas to fly a helicopter. And you're, I'm talking about the tightest LZs, sloped landings inside of tight landing zones. It was absolutely wild. Consuelo, my helicopter just performed absolutely flawless. I didn't think this was the right helicopter for the job but I had the ability oh, yeah. to take insulin, food, water into the tightest spots in the area and drop them off and get them to people in need and then haul people out. Yeah, she got a little beat up. She got puked in. We yeah. hauled dogs, a lot of people, and uh, it is what it is, just a machine. But I'm so proud of this machine and what it's become. You know, This was abandoned in Venezuela, and now she's out here helping people out. Lastly, before we get to the footage, I'll say, I do feel a little weird putting stuff like this on social media. However, the awareness I feel we brought to the area made it worth it. There's over $350,000 on the Hope Mill Fund Relief Group GoFundMe. And also they started up a pilot jet fuel GoFundMe. And I'll put those links down in the description because there's a lot of helicopters flying. By the end of day two, there was 37 helicopters, private helicopters on site at Hickory Airport helping out. Basically, day one, this wonderful woman named Erin from the Hope Mill Fund GoFundMe, we, we just met her at the airport and she's like, can you take these supplies to this spot? And we just went and then we come back and they would just load up the helicopter while I'm looking it over, jam it with fuel and we would go. I don't know who this woman is, Aaron, but the fact that she was able to get us the correct information to the worst spots I've ever seen and give us the right supplies and have them ready on time when we got there, it was incredible. Phenomenal. And then day two, Operation Airdrop, these guys organized a lot of pilots and they had a good plan and they deployed us correctly. And we flew that for as long as we could yesterday and then got back to our family. But it was insane up there. And there's a long road ahead of all of the Asheville area to even get out of there. It, it's unbelievable. So I don't know what the current status is. I've heard a lot of the critically injured or in need people have been helped, but there's still more. And the government assets are showing up like crazy. There's Chinooks and Blackhawks everywhere. There's a C-17 Globemaster at the airport and they're working like crazy. Some of my friends brought in some sick helicopters. A lot of these guys just did an amazing job. and. This flying is no joke. I'm talking no joke. So That's a, a huge thank you to is all that the a pilots who were part of it. BK and 117? thank you to Thoroughbred Aviation for giving me a safe helicopter. It's just been the craziest couple days of my life and I wanted to share some of these clips. So let's get to that and then we'll get to the original idea of this video, which is picking up my brand new refurbished helicopter. Let's get to it. Here's an LZ from day one. We just saw people standing here and we had a helicopter full of supplies. So we dropped here, dropped this stuff off and hauled some people out. Relatively easy. This is probably the hardest landing I did 
Yeah, power lines there on the left, a house directly under the helicopter right now. This takes every ounce of horsepower the helicopter has. Yeah. And also full of supplies. Now we did calculate. Okay, okay, look. In this video, if you look, there's a red X painted on that road. That's where these people think, and that's, that's the LZ. They say, okay, you aren't going to be in the power lines here. On a helicopter? That is landing on a postage stamp. Just from wind shear, just from everything going on around you. Um, and what he was talking about is this one of the most difficult landings because of everything going on around him. He's having to use all of his power. The toughest thing a helicopter has to do is hover. You know, landing... If they can come in at an angle and land, that's the way they like to land. They like to come in, angle, flare up, and, and set it down. Um, or that's what all the pilots, I'm not a pilot, I'm not pretending to be a pilot, but I've got hundreds of hours logged in a hurricane flying with pilots from platform to platform, from platform to shore base, from shore base to platform, uh, so yeah, I've got some time and some air ambulance time when I was a medic back in the day. So I've got some time and some helicopters. Late weight and balances before we took off for these flights. And, uh, you can just see how tight it is. This is, this is where the MD 500 shines and the residents were putting X's on the roads where we could possibly set down. And uh, that was really helpful to spot where these guys needed help. And then when we would land, we would talk to them and say, hey, go clear a bigger LZ. Yeah. And maybe they can bring in a Blackhawk. So it was pretty helpful when other people were clearing more LZs up the hill. And then you'll see in the next clip, I actually made it up higher on this valley after we dropped off some of these people for another real tight spot. Pucker factor in here has got to be tight for him. Pucker factor has got to be tight. And that's the best feeling in the world. That's the best feeling. Pucker is done. There. Getting the women and dogs down. Now his wife, oh, this is important, hold on. All right, and I'm sorry, that rotor whine, I'm, I'm used to hearing that, but I'm not used to talking over it. If you look at his wife, her job sitting over there in that seat, she's looking at those power lines right off to the right. She is, her head is on a swivel. When you are in the front seat, of a helicopter with the pilot when when you're in a small bird he's using you as eyes so you have to have your head on a swivel and be ready to tell him hey you need i'm i'm looking at this so uh great co-pilot there cleat Clear. There's helicopters everywhere. Loading back up. Back in we go.
power lines. That was an easier landing than the one on the road, though. They did a white egg spray paint. Your tail looks clear, buddy. Thank you, sir. And communicating with other pilots. That's awesome. This is a person we found solely through social media. Maddie was dying to go check it out because it was a four month old baby and we were able to find him. When you're in a helicopter, this this is deceptive. You've got to look at depth perception and all that. Uh, you can see power lines going. There's a house on the other side of the road. Power lines going through this backyard. And then you see all this green grassy knoll, which you go, oh, there's a landing zone. But look, let me tell you something. You're in the mountains. And you have to take topography into consideration. This landing, when I watched this for the first time, I had a pucker factor going, like I was in that bird with him. Um, if you look, he has a digital horizon that is on the left-hand side of his controls, and you see the blue and yellow. Uh, that's his horizon, and you can watch that, and it's telling you how you're tilting and everything. And on a helicopter, you want to have a flat, stable surface. Now, on a small chopper like this, he can he can deal with some stuff, but he has to deal with the limits of a rotor ring aircraft. So, watch as he's coming in, um, how he changes on the fly to find a better spot to actually set that helicopter down.
look at the horizon. Look at this horizon. He's trying to come down to find a spot to set down. It's getting close. And he's starting to set down and look at that horizon. He realizes, I'm a, this isn't going to be, I can't do this here. This slope here felt like it was about at the limit of what yep. Consuelo could handle, so yep. we ended up picking up and having to go down to the very, very bottom. Which Maddie it, had her head out of the window watching the tail. We were able to use that little flat spot at the bottom right next to the playground. Well, it looks like he's on a dam for a pond. Here's another thing you have to consider. You don't want anyone approaching that aircraft from its port side because that rotor wing up over overhead with him going down on that slope, he's thinking about, am I going to be touching the top of this berm that's over here with my rotor or don't come over that hill where you're walking into my rotor. Is there a lady with a kid up here? That's my yeah. daughter on the hill. It's, it's I can take daughter. her down. I can take all you guys down okay. if you want. Okay, here we go get him. That is the power of water. Hydrology. Wiping out. People are trapped in these mountains because the infrastructure is wiped out from Mother Nature. Water. Look at that gap in that bridge. Y'all, he, he mentioned a GoFundMe that's helping the people up there in North Carolina. Y'all really need to or, or take a look at, Hell if you can, yeah, help them out. You're on the Please Be Fun YouTube channel. All righty, guys, we are back at good old Thoroughbred Aviation mm. to pick up our girl, Suela. All right, she's looking Fine. Looking good. Done. That's got all his when he's picking her up after being refurbished. Look, look, look at this bougie. Look at the door opening nice and 
Plastics on a brand new shock. I mean, it's oh yeah, we got a shock in there now. Plastics. Oh yeah, my like a, goodness, it looks good. It's a Cadillac now. It's a Cadillac. Back here, we all new. Back seats in. Literally Woo! everything's new. Yeah, yeah. Bring it back Shoo! seats. Look at that. Luxury. Damn, brother. Dang. That dude. looks. Freaking crispy clean. This is here. way nicer than Paul's 500. <laughs> like, way nicer. Have you ever. All right, I'm going to tell y'all that is a bougie helicopter. Uh, that is not made carrying folks onto oil and gas platforms. That is made carrying some. Uh, uh, well, you might carry the CEO of a oil company out to a platform with one of those, but uh, the rest of us didn't get to ride in anything that nice. Promise you. You haven't seen one this nice, Paul? Uh, no. Didn't think so. <laughs> this is Gucci. Oh, yeah, it's all, Gucci. That's what Paul said. Wow. Came out nice. The seats, Woo! The seats are sick. Woo! Seats are sick. So they've been. Really dialing her in for the last week. Be happy, man. Yeah. Today, we're flying her home back to Florida. Holy smokes. Well, next couple of days, we got Paul with us just uh, to, you know, be safe and be as really thorough inspections, which we love. So let's hit the road, brother. All right, guys, I have a little fuel mishap here. Just so <laughs> everyone knows, the ox tank, this is closed when it's up. There's even a placard about it. I had it open. And boy, did we have a little fuel spill. Okay, but we're good now. George, how Not you till you there, clean buddy? it up. I'm ready to roll. Remediate right, that spill. Paul's finishing up some calls. Look at this, boys. All right, first stop, we are actually heading to Whistling Diesel. So let's freaking load up and go rip it. Huge thank you to Thoroughbred Aviation, specifically my buddy Joe and Jarrett, the main mechanic on this. They crushed it. We're really excited, finally getting on the road with her. Clear. Clear. I hear the auto reignite right now. Well, it's going. The night is going. Yeah. Fox 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 departure from the East Ramp will be at your own risk. Use caution once airborne. Flighting 180. Remain east of runway 4 at all times. The wind 1108. Highly very ramping our own risk. 180. East of 4 at all times. 14 Fox Trot. Keys and P's are good. Expressions. We got still got fuel. Good to go. Center wings 904. Contact departure. Park. Center wings on a port. We'll see y'all. Set some 6564. Turn number 2 following the global cost break turbulence. Runway 4. Clear to land. Wind 1107. Clear to land. Runway 4. 6564. Before you turn downwind, you get some altitude and some yep. airspeed before you go, go downwind. Find a path of least resistance out there. Terrain, system available. How's she flying, bud? What do you good. think, Paul? Feels good, man. Feels good. George? Feels How are you? Great. You good back there? Oh, yeah. You see any maintenance issues you want to work on? Nothing, nothing. She's dialed. Is Paul flying smooth enough for you? Paul's definitely doing a good job. Okay. Oh, are you flying again? <laughs> that was geared. That's it's really funny. Controls. Real funny. All right, well, we're pulling up to Whistling Diesel's place. Beautiful sunset. How's she feel, Paul? You've been doing some flying. Yeah, flying she's feeling real bit. nice. Nice and smooth. We pulled our ox tank, so we're on our ox fuel now. Running great. I think so. I think we're looking good. She's uh, come a long way, Venezuela. Yeah. And we had a couple of issues when we left earlier today. We came back, fixed them, and they have not come back. So that's good. Always going to have some bugs. Always yep. going to have a few bugs. Yeah, we're doing great. So we'll be there in a few. <laughs> He's guiding them in. 
This thing's on fire. <laughs> You're on fire, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Dude, what is he doing? Oh, he's doing a circle down here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, let him land under the power line. He's smoking and he's giving you a circle. Oh, okay. Wire. Wire. Warning. <laughs> Wire. Warning. Terrain. Terrain. That's nice of him to do that. It looks so good. I love what they did with it. All right, well, we're on the road. Just left Whistlin's. Had some good old fun there. And uh, where are we off to now, Paul? Southbound? Southbound. Southbound and down. Going home. All right, let's do it. Let's take Consuela back to the barn. All right, guys, we're ripping along. We're doing 130 knots across the ground, and we're gonna fly for maybe another hour or so. We're gonna get some fuel, fly for a little bit longer, then call it a night before it gets dark. Not that we can't fly at night, but because it's a new helicopter and we're in unfamiliar terrain, if we did have an emergency, especially in these hills covered in trees, it would be a tough one to safely uh, land the helicopter. So we're going to call it a night once it gets dark, and then we'll pick back up in the morning. But boy, is she running great right now. Where's your ground in case? Oh, okay. I see it. I see it. Gas stations are like dumpster gas stations. All right, guys, there's Consuela. Just landed. We got a couple hours left to do in the morning. We're going to let her take a little nap. Take a breather. See her in the morning, yep. Check her out in the morning. Everything went real good, though. You guys did great. Hey, thanks, buddy. Appreciate Mostly you. Paul just kind of sucking lately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that happens. Getting old. Yeah. There she is, looking fine. Woo-hoo-wee. <laughs> this guy. Hi. What's going on here, Paul? You gotta put a little oil in this thing, man. A little no oil. No funnel, dude. No funnel right now. No funnel. Look at this. Oh, I gotta see the fancy one. Or are you just gonna bite it? No. Is he gonna stab it with his pocket knife? Oh, here. Oh, he's gonna stab oh, it with is. his peck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. Oh, he uses Damn. a gold knife for this. I should have known. When you pulled out the tool for this, Paul was gonna shoot you away. I know. He's like, that's known way that. too nice and fancy. <laughs> He's like, that's how idiots do it. We took a little commercial break, another commercial break that I didn't make y'all have to look at. Uh, and, you know, people say, instead of saying at the end of the video, say it sometime in the middle of the video, hey, if you haven't liked, this video, please do so. It helps me with the algorithm. It tells fate or YouTube to show more people this video. Uh, also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. I have other great reviews, a few of them from Cleet, but I've got some great reviews from other content creators. And I also have some of my own stuff where I go out and I'm dealing with natural resources in the southeastern part of the United States. I deal with going and catching crabs. I bring those crabs home. I clean them. I cook them. I do all that kind of stuff on the channel as well. So if you would, give us a look. If you like us, please subscribe us. Thank you very much. And back to Cleet. <laughs> <laughs> You get so much as a drop on my <laughs> So what Watch happened? It. She just burned a little oil? Yeah, the engine, the engine. Yeah. This is how we do oh, it. Oh, they got a this, this, is, this is how we do it. Oh. That's pretty normal. I like that. That's okay. clever. Yeah, it protects his... Uh... Whoa, watch the paint. I'm on the inside ring. I mean, he did slap it right up there. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Can't play with it.
You can't. You can't. You, you can't, can't play with it. You're you can't. You gotta make. You gotta make a commitment and you just do it. Oh, okay. Is that a full court job there? No, it's not a full court job. Oh, really? Starting to sit up back here. Getting dirty. No, no, no. When there's no oil on here. I just, yeah, that's yeah, a good point. Yeah. <laughs> you, you want to see the scratch? Look at that, guys. What a good looking machine. home a little better than last time you saw it yeah what's happening right now what do you what do you oh I, you open it up just to let the hot air out that's the engine bay there. that's her little engine so are you supposed to do that every time yeah well it's nice to you know let the engine cool off you know what's interesting is last time you saw this it was you know out of the crate but you were also pregnant if you watched the video back no belly no belly, <laughs> no little belly but we have a baby girl now so I know. Right. Two new girls. Two new girls. It's good to have her home. So I'm going to put it away. Okay. Figuring it off the video. Show you guys. Consuela is now cleaned up. So shout out to my detail guy, Cole. He came over this morning right after we got back. Basically cleaned her up. So she's looking a lot better. All right, guys. Well, to conclude this video, I want to say thank you. You know, this opportunity for me to own this aircraft is 100% because of you guys watching our videos and supporting us. 100%. There's no other reason why this aircraft exists in this barn and in my hands other than you guys. Thank you so much for everything you do for me. Watching our videos means the world to us. We get these crazy opportunities all because of you. There's no other reason. And I wanted to end off the video by saying we have put 30 hours on this helicopter. For those of you in the helicopter world, you understand that's a lot of hours in two weeks time. Consuela has been flying her tail off. And I want to thank Thoroughbred Aviation for making her so safe and so awesome. There are zero issues with Consuela as of 30 hours in. And I'm just pumped up. We beat the heck out of her. She's running awesome. What an amazing opportunity to be able to buy this from Venezuela, get it here, and she's this amazing. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching New for Dale. We'll frickin' see you later. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't already know, we have the 2.4 hours of Lamolets this November 15th and 16th. Monster trucks, Van Prix, Crown Vicks racing, driven by all your favorite YouTubers, fireworks, and more. You can come to the Freedom Factory with you and your pals and see some live freaking action. You can buy tickets to our show on thefoat.com. Just pull up the Freedom Factory on there and you can get the tickets, get ready. We got VIP tickets for sale. Come see the action in person. But if you can't make it in person, you can always watch online on Freedom Plus. It's gonna be an action packed weekend. 2.4 hours of Lamolets is right around the corner. Grab your tickets and we'll see you there. <laughs> He, he did that lawyer talk. He sped it up where he got all the information in just as quick as he could. But let me tell you something about this young man. He got a brand new toy. He got a million dollar toy. The very beginning part of this video was the most heartwarming to me. This guy got a brand new toy. And when people were in need, he said, let's go. You heard him. He took it up there. It had been uh, puked in. It got dirty. He didn't care. He was going up there and helping. Uh, that says a lot about him. Says a lot about his wife, who was his co-pilot through this thing, and whoever kept their children while they were up there doing that. This family helped people in need more than you know. This is a civilian. He's not in the military. He's not in the National Guard. He didn't have to do this. He went up and did it because that's just the kind of stand-up guy that he is. That's why I'm drawn to him and like his videos. Yeah, he does some crazy stuff on his channel. And like I said, Ryan's going to have links to his channel. If you aren't already subscribed to him, I want y'all to go over there and take a look at some of his stuff and give him likes and, and give him a subscribe. Um, and like I said, tomorrow 
that was Hurricane Helene issues that happened in North Carolina that he went and helped with. He was battening down today, getting ready for Hurricane Milton that is coming in to where he is. And, you know, so y'all keep him in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, again, if you made it this far in the video, thank you very much for staying this long. I appreciate all of y'all. I'm sorry it's been a while since I've done a, a long form review. We'll probably have an, another review next week. Uh, and I'm going to put some more stuff together in cooking and probably some natural resources coming up at some point. So look forward to uh, seeing y'all back for all that stuff. Thanks again. Y'all take care. Have a great week.